Where and when were you born? Well, I had a, a very peculiar birth. I was born with a veil over my face. Uh, they said I was dead. They pushed me back, Cata McNary, pushed me back as dead. And uh, my grandma Smith says, that baby's not dead, said I saw it moving. So I didn't get the spanking that most babies get. <laughs> I was, I've always lived in Carwell County, Carwell County, and I've never been out of the side of High Brighton. Uh, I've always been, I always could see High Brighton from wherever I lived. What are some of your favorite childhood memories? I'd say that's when I was dating my wife. I'd say that's some of it. Uh, and. Uh, Oh yeah, I mean, uh, and I've always loved to drive cars, and I, I, when I would go on a trip, I would drive uh, the first thousand miles, <laughs> then turn it over to somebody else. Um, where else have you lived in the past? Oh, uh, I've lived in, uh, well, uh, Old Mexico was a place that, uh, that we lived and uh, I was doing missionary work. Doing missionary work in old, old Mexico and I, we lived in New Mexico and uh, Arizona for a, little, for, for a little while. What was your first job? Electrician. <laughs> How many jobs have you had in the past and what were they? Uh, well, mostly electrical work. Uh, that, uh, that I wired houses and I've uh, done uh, commercial also. And uh, uh, that's that's just about it. I mean, as far as uh, the, the electrical work. How has Caldwell County changed over time? Oh my. <laughs> I'll tell you now, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, I come up through the Great Depression. They call it a recession now, but the Great uh, uh, Depression, and uh, I was, uh, I remember the, uh, the Pearl Harbor, December the 7th, 1941. I remember that, and uh, uh, but anyway, uh, that's uh, that, that, that's just about it. I mean, as far as uh, were you ever married? Oh yeah, we have eleven children. <laughs> eleven children, four uh, four girls and seven boys. How long were you married? Well, that's a good question. Uh, if my wife had lived to February the 22nd, we'd been married 70 years. 70 years. Um, how old were you when you went into the war? I was somewhere in my 20s, uh, maybe Maybe 25, maybe something like that. Maybe around 25. What in, made you want to go to war? Do what? What made you want to go to war? I didn't. I didn't want to go. I did not want to go. And uh, but I was in the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, uh, it was. Uh, I was under uh, Patton, the Third Army. 80th Division, 317th Inf Infantry Regiment. Mm -hmm. Where were you stationed? I was stationed in Fort Bragg. Uh, Fort Jackson. I went, I went from Fort Jackson to Fort Bragg and I went from there to Camp Walters, Texas. Did you ever come in contact with the SS troops? Oh, yes. Here's the whole story. 
the best of my knowledge, there was a man happened in on the uh, during uh, the time of uh, of a, a real uh, hard. Uh, I mean the, the SS. But anyway. I wouldn't let him do anything. I wouldn't let this man do nothing. I said, you stay here and stay still, stay down. And I said, uh, <clears throat> well, I, I want to bring the first of it. In other words, we had a 604 air cool machine gun sitting in an attic of a house and we'd pull guard on it. In the intervals, you know, we'd pull guard. and. Uh, I, I sat in there one night and I heard tanks are coming up the valley and I heard tanks on the other side of me and I said uh, well I said uh, it's a good thing to know that we've got tanks on both sides of us you see I had I'd never experienced the artillery barrage while I was in the States they just got me ready to get me over there. I was a replacement, drafted, and uh, but anyway, uh, I had just left the machine gun, 604 Arco machine gun, and uh, a fellow Webb from New Jersey, his last name was Webb, and I didn't even get down the steps until he had been shot on an angle through the top of the head. Well, <clears throat> this man, this man appeared into, uh, into the, uh, I w but I'm going to ask you the questions. Who was this man? This man, I wouldn't let him do anything. I went up to see if I, my outfit was still there and it was all gone. I had no way of telling where they were at, no way of, at all. And I told this man, this man was with me, I said, uh, I'm, I'm going to go over here and, and peep out the window. And just as I got to the window, almost to the window, a shell fell under the window, fell, I mean, under the window and blowed the window right by me. And uh, so uh, this man, I, I wouldn't let him do anything, but I went up there to see if, where my outfit was at and it was all gone. And I, I didn't know what to do. I said, uh, you follow me. And I, it was a two-story building and rooms was on both sides. Uh, if you can picture that, I guess you can. There's rooms on both sides, there's a two-story building, and I went all the way back into the left-hand room and put him in a wardrobe. Well, they come to check the house out, and uh, while he was coming to check the house out, uh, I reasoned with death. I know because every one of the, the SS had a, a Burt gun what they call a burp gun. And you couldn't, you couldn't fire it, pull the trigger all the way back without the barrel raising up on it. And I know that, uh, I know, I, I just reasoned with death and I said, well, uh, the girl's not there, the oldest girl, but uh, I said, I'd love to see my children. But I said, this is just one of those things. I just reasoned with death, you see. And, um, uh, but they come in and check the room where I was at, and uh, I was standing at the corner of the wardrobe. And they come in there and hollered something and went back out. I don't know where they saw me or not. I don't know. But anyway, on up in the day, I heard some big guns going off and way in the distance, and the, the shells were just coming right over the top of the house. It's going shoo, right over the top of the house. Because there was a tank pulled up, a, a big tiger tank pulled right up against the house. 
And uh, I, but I, I, I did look out there. I looked out there and I, I saw it was SS. I mean, I had on the dark uniforms, not the little gray ones. And uh, but anyway, uh, that man. Who was that man? Who was that man? That man never left that building with me. I saw him no more during the whole war. And the man, uh, other words, uh, the only way that I know is that there was a, an old colonel, Colonel Williams, an old jagged helmet, the steel part, the whole back blowed out of it, he said, I'm going to put that on. But it was a sign for me also. He said, I'm going to put that on. He said, I don't believe it'll happen the second time. And uh, that's the only way I'd have known. He said, uh, I went out there, whenever they, they retook the town, the, the man never left the building with me. He, he wasn't with me when the, the, the man called me uh, He said, I said, you get you something that'll fire. And I went out there, and they was dead man laying all the road. I couldn't even step without almost stepping on a dead man. Germans and Americans. And uh, he said, you get, some, get you something that'll fire and follow me. He said, I'll take you back to your outfit. Now this old sergeant, York, he said, I've noticed you, all of you men. He said, uh, you get your mail and said you lay down on top of the ground and said your mind's back home. But I've noticed this man pointing towards me. Said he gets his mail and puts it in his field jacket and just keeps the digging. <laughs> said that man will go home. And he said uh, when I went back to, the, to my outfit, he said a bad word, and he said, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? I don't know what he meant by that. He said, what did I tell you? But he, uh, anyway, uh, on up in the, he tried to, he tried to, uh, he was way behind and he said, uh, he hollered, he hollered as loud as he could, he said, move out on the right. Well, we was sort of hid behind some, uh, in other words, we supposed to went up this valley in the, in uh, other words, at night time. And I, it was, it was foggy that morning and I looked up on the left, a red flare went up. I looked up on the right, a red flare went up. So we got caught in a crossfire. And this tank, this, this foreign tank, uh, 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 about a 90 millimeter t uh, tank fire at one man. And uh, I couldn't move out. And uh, I said, uh, I mean, when I got up the top of the hill, that man said, if you'd have moved out, my buddy wouldn't have got hit. Right in behind me. I was always right behind me, right behind me. And, uh, uh, he said, uh, if you, if you would have moved out, said my buddy wouldn't have got hit. And, uh, those soldiers up there, they, they just, they just bored him, I guess, uh, uh, all of that saying. And he just kept on and on, just yapping, yapping. And, uh, they told him, said, now that man knows what to do and what not to do. Said, we're all here to get back if we can. But he said, what about you keeping your mouth off of him? That's what they said. And, uh, but anyway, they told me, uh, old signs of World War I, there was about a 18 inch hole in the wall, in the rock wall. And it was about, uh, about four or five inches wide. And, uh, they t told me, said, you, you watch that hole, because there's Germans all around. And they said, you watch that hole. He said, uh, 
that the Germans won't throw a hand grenade in there. But if I'd have known, if I'd have known, I, uh, 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 88 hit on the one on the right, and 88 feel, hit on the left. And if I'd have known, I, they had reading on their binoculars, they had reading on it, and uh, they were zeroing in on their target. And so that, that, that explosion and this explosion, then it was a direct hit. That it, it, uh, an 88 come in there and blew the server one out of it. And blew me up under some kind of old uh, farm machine. Cut the knees out of my pants. Blowed my raincoat all to pieces. I mean, it blowed it all to pieces. And uh, uh, they said, they asked me if I wanted to go back. I said, uh, they, they said, I said, no. No clothes. I mean, just cut the knees out of my pants and <laughs> and uh, underclothes and all. I just cut the knees out of them. But anyway, <clears throat> an inch is good as a mile if God's in it. Did you ever guard a concentration camp? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I sure did. I was. I stood guard at one of the uh, consecration camps. I, uh, I've never seen any a, a pitiful sight in all my life. You could even, a man would sit down, you could even see under him. That beat all, i never seen anybody as poor. But we got on uh, the 4th Armored Division, we got on tanks, and uh, they moved in to this camp. We couldn't find nobody, no leaders at all. But they had, there's old uh, uh, rib cases where they had burnt people. And uh, I don't know how many, they, that thousands and thousands, or they had six million. Uh, but I, I, I know they killed more than that. There was six million. A Adolf Eichmann was down in the, uh, uh, South America somewhere down in there and the Jews come and got him and hung him Adolf Eichmann and uh, but anyway uh, they uh, it was uh, we was at Bastogne that's where we, that's where the the Battle of the Bulge happened Bastogne and there was gliders there and the paratroopers they just they killed them just I, I mean, all is this still in the air, and uh, but uh, that eighty-eight. I mean, it is it about done me in. But they haul me seventy-five miles after that uh, eighty-eight went off. They haul me seventy-five miles, and I told I, I know the last thing that leaves you is your hearing because I, I couldn't see, I'd bled so much I couldn't see, and they x-rayed me three times, and I, and I, I saw nobody, but I could still hear them. So that goes to show you that hearing's the last thing that leaves you. What battle did you fight in? Battle of the Bones. <laughs> yes, what is one of your most memorable moments of the war? Oh, it, I wasn't afraid but one time. The time I left till I got back. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. I mean... Um, were you ever severely wounded? Well, this hot blood was coming up out of my lungs. I've, I've had a lot of problems with my right lung that it's about the size of a, in other words, it, it seemed like it was about the size of a, a, of a dime that was hurting all the time, just like a burning. And, uh, but that hot blood would come up, and I told this uh, driver of the amulets, I said, uh, we're wasting their time. 
because I, I I was just about I was just about gone, and uh, but anyway, they uh, I come home with the 90th division. It was 18 days and a half coming back home. Got into a storm and went all the way south as far as we could go. I was supposed to come on the Grand Bell, and we got an SOS from them that they had broke the compeller shaft. It raise them, raise up a little old Liberty ship and come down and down, 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 down you go and boom, it hit in the, hit in the bottom. And I mean the storm, I mean it was terrible. And uh, that thing, that ship rolled over on its side and I could have walked down the side of it. I could have walked down the side of it. You know the reason it didn't sink? What? I was on there. <laughs> How long did you serve? Uh, I was on the front lines 11, months and 11 days. How long were you in the war overall from the beginning to the end? Oh, uh, I would say probably two years. Do you ever regret going into the war? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what is there anything you wish you would have done instead? Well, I guess so. I mean, uh, I went, uh, my first cousin went down to Fort Bragg with me. He come back and I stayed. And, uh, but uh, I would, uh, I'd have probably wound up a truck driver probably would have if uh, everything would have went right. Probably would I have a truck driver. What was your position? Oh, uh, but I served in the, uh, under Patton, uh, uh, 80th Division, 317th Infantry Reg Regiment. Uh, well, I mean, uh, okay. What was your rank? PFC. Um, <laughs> do you have any awards? Oh, uh, supposed to have, oh, uh, supposed to have three battle stars, one for Central, uh, I mean one for the Rhine River, one for Central Europe, and Austria. I was down in the Austria Mountains too. I didn't know. Um, what do you do for a living now? King. <laughs> 90 years old. I'm 91 years old. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that you were a missionary. Have you ever been a minister? Yes, ma'am. How long did you minister for? Oh, something over, let's see, something over 50 years. What more do you wish you would have done in life? Well, I, d I just don't, I mean, I really, there's something I, that, I, uh, that I would, that I've, I've always served the Lord. And I, 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 of my ministry, I would like to be remembered of my ministry, and uh, probably will get a, a twenty-one gun salute at my death, probably. <laughs>